Hello all, Kip here. Today's podcast is minus our Diva co-host, Thomas. Thomas heard about an accessory sale on three-wheel golf carts. He could not suppress his quote-unquote gotta-have-it desires. Shaking my head. Joining me today in his place is an old golf buddy, Carrie Phillips. Carrie and I have played golf for many years. Our focus today is going to be on tempo. Tempo plays an important part of the golf swing. We also throw in some stories from our 15 years of golf outings. By the way, for those of you that have been listening since we started, you will notice and hopefully appreciate that we've upgraded our audio. We are now set up with two microphones. Woo-hoo. As always, we hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Scratch and Waggle Golf Podcast. Find us on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, and at scratchandwaggle at gmail.com. Hope you enjoy today's show. Hey guys, this is Kip. I uh, got my buddy Kerry Phillips with us tonight. Uh, I think Thomas is out shopping for uh, some accessories on his three-wheel golf cart. So uh, he'll be back next week, next episode. So, um, Kerry, you want to say hello? Hello, guys. Kerry, uh, me and Kerry have been playing golf now for several years. And um, been through a lot. We've walked a lot of golf courses. we played a lot of golf. I uh, really enjoy it. And uh, Kerry is an old softball player who has converted to golf. And uh, what what made you what made you want to play golf when you first got started? Well, softball was getting too hard on the on the body. I always knew when I got older I was going to start playing golf. So when I got older, I started playing golf. <laughs> that sounds a lot like what Thomas said. He was uh, he was an athlete, and then he wanted to do something uh, to where he knew he could play a long time. So, um, well, tell us about maybe did you ever take lessons? Uh, I've taken lessons from people like uh, Mr. Scratch over here that gives us, me his opinion on how I should hit a golf ball. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've given some tips before. Whether you want, you know, whether you want him to give you a tip or not, he will give it to you. <laughs> it's a, it's just there, man. I mean, you see something, somebody doing something wrong. My my goal is to help. Um, I'm, I hope I haven't uh, been a. Uh, annoyance with that but the idea is yeah you see somebody that's struggling with a game and you see how to help them hit the ball better um i, I try to jump in but there are people out there you bring it, up a good point it, yeah i mean that's true i mean you if you're sitting there you're especially if you're a beginner you you just don't know what you're doing so you, all you want to know is most time you, you hear keep your head down and hit the ball keep your head down and hit the ball while well, doing that and it's still going way right way left that's right. Two feet in front of me. <laughs> so you're like, hey, uh, Kip, uh, what am I doing? Yeah. So you see somebody right, yeah, hit the ball in front of you, and you're like, how'd they do that? And uh, so, yeah, I, I worked with Kerry. I don't know how long it took. He like like Just like Thomas, Kerry's an athlete. So it's easier to work with athletes that, that kind of, you can tell them, hey, try this. Uh, you know, close your stance, change your grip. Uh, and the next thing you know, you know, he's pounding it straight down the middle. And, um, and what's fun, we play enough golf together when we, when we play golf and, and something's wrong, um, you know, for, for Carrie, you, you tell me, you tell me from your, what you see me do a lot, but what I see Carrie doing a lot is he'll, he'll speed up his swing. And, uh, before you know it, how you many know, times have I heard Kip say tempo, Kerry, tempo, tempo. Kerry. Um, cause when, when Mr. When Mr. Felterman here, we'll get to the Ultraman story here in a second, but when Kerry slows down and gets his tempo right. Uh, his backswing, uh, slow it down, and then make a good, just solid turn through the ball, get his shoulder, right shoulder through um, with with some good tempo. Uh, he can hit it. He can hit it a mile. And uh, so when he's not hitting it right, first thing, and again, we've talked about this on previous episodes, you know, nerves. Sometimes nerves play into it. But uh, if you can if you can set that tempo to where, you know, what's the what's the tempo thing? Do you have like a, do you count like a one, two, three? What's your, uh, when I say, hey, Carrie, you need to work on your tempo, get your tempo right. Well, a lot of people, you know, you hear uh, Freddie Couples, Freddie Couples, and I just say, Carrie Phillips, Ultraman. <laughs> I like it. I like that. And what we're trying to describe is, um, and you can go, I think there's a video out there. I, I even tried to show um, Thomas one time. I think it's Annika Sorenstam has a video and, and they're teaching you this but as you're standing over the ball you got a driver in your hand as you bring the club back in your back swing you would count one and when you got to the top of your back swing they count two 
and then three, not just a not just a flat three, but a three, you know, like a three. Um, that's funny. Uh, as you're swinging through three and you're and you're drawing that three out, is now you're back swinging your and you're swinging through hitting the ball. So with Freddie couples, it's Fred is the back swing, E the end of Freddie, E is at the top, and then couples is the follow through hitting the ball. Or the downswing, the hitting the ball, and the follow through. Yeah, and if you ever want to see tempo, while you use Freddie Couples, you just watch him swing. It's he swings effortless, and it's all about his tempo. Yeah. So when we get when we get Kerry going, say like, "Hey man, work on that tempo." It that now I know what you're thinking, Kerry Phillips. Kerry Phillips, Ultraman. Ultraman. Nice. So all right, your turn. When when I'm when I'm hitting the ball squarely, uh, what do you tell me? Well, most of the time, you know, it's like like I do a lot with my tempo. Is It's basically what you're doing is you're trying to hit it too hard. You're trying to do too much. Um, you, you, you're you a natural golfer. I mean, if you just play your game and like, oh, I'm going to try to hit it further. Well, Kip, you don't need to do that because you're going to hit it straight down the middle if you just do your normal swing. And that's so hard to do. <laughs> but it, but I, it, always, I always ask Kip, oh, where's your cut at? Where's your cut at? Oh, I want to try to draw. Uh, don't do that <laughs> <laughs> it's tough uh my stock shot uh would be a cut uh which is just a a left to right shot for a right-handed golfer and uh yeah i mean it's it's a standard no thing I, I don't even think about it i can get up stand on one foot and hit this shot without thinking about it but the deal with a cut is you lose about 10 anywhere from 8 to 10 yards off the tee whereas a draw which goes from right to left for a right-handed golfer puts a little different spin on the golf ball and you're going to get 10 to 15 more yards generally. So the difference between eight to 10 short or adding the tent, now you've gone from hitting a cut that you're going to be about 30 yards shorter than a draw. So, so when you shot your personal best the other day, what did you do? The personal best, uh, up at, up at, uh, Musgrove, everything was working. Um, did you just stock shot? It was not a stock shot. It was not. It was an accident. It was a straight. Everything (laughs) was going straight. It was an accident. My foot slipped. Um, yeah. And that, thanks for bringing that up. I like, I like talking about that round. Um, there was a lot going on. I've already said that there was a lot of distractions going on and, but I was powering through the ball and let me try to give you a visual of what I was doing. If you got the head of a driver, if you're looking at the head of the driver, and most of them at the top in the middle, they've got some sort of mark. Uh, my driver's got a, a Chevron symbol looking thing. It's a Callaway X, XR 14 or 16 driver. Anyway, and my thought process was I want to make sure the club head not only is square to the ball, but I want that mark hitting the middle of the golf ball. So I was hitting it flush, if you will, right, right there. And... It might have been tempo. You probably had to keep your head down to do that. Yeah, you have to. You got to. You got to keep your eye on the ball. You've got to see the club hit the golf ball, um, and that's a big deal for for beginners that don't do that. They want to see where the ball's going, and um, so I was swinging what I felt like was firm. I'm going to use the word firm. I was not thinking tempo, but I was getting my right shoulder through the target, and then so I was driving the ball well. Um, getting it out there and and again this this golf course i played for 22 25 years um so there's a comfort feeling very comfortable you know what you know what you need to do you know where to place the ball kind of thing and then my irons uh i was able to hit a lot of short irons that day the course doesn't play long I'm, i'll admit that it wasn't a long course i think it played 59 something i got the scorecard in the cabinet sure okay. i'll get it out and show it to you <laughs> Or get multiple um, copies, one for your office, one for <laughs> your bedroom. Um, right but, next to the picture of your wife. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You found it. Um, <laughs> and then putting, uh, chipping and putting, uh, I didn't miss many greens. Uh, so the bent grass, oh, they were actually sanded that day. They were sanded uh, and they were rolling great. Uh, nobody else had played yet. There was no bumps. There was no... And the guy was literally right in front of us dragging them. So they were just, it was like old school, like probably whatever year that might be when they were sandy greens. Um, Anyway, 
And it's funny that you bring that up because I sent you a link today. Did you get it or yesterday um, about the top 36 things you're not supposed to oh, do? I was, yeah, I saw some of it. All right, there's one in there. And I, I, the reason I was saying this is funny is because I tell Thomas this all the time or I've done it to him enough and he knows and he saw it and he started laughing immediately. But you've, you've been witness to me where I can I can walk in, we'll sit down to talk or go to lunch or whatever, and I can start talking to Kerry and tell him every shot on every hole and probably the distance of the shot. Right. And that's one of the top 36 things you're not supposed to do to your buddies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw where you don't talk to your ball either. Hey, like, keep, your, keep your mouth on my ball. <laughs> I do all that. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell it to go. I want it to stop. So I'm going to try my best to uh, limit limit my discussion of my golf for every every shot on 18 holes. So maybe uh, stick to that. It doesn't bother me shots. a bit. Oh, good, good. And uh, and I don't mind listening to people uh, do the same thing because you kind of get into their head. And that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about and, and try to get you to maybe uh, expand upon just a little bit. Uh, Kerry, when we were playing together and he was learning the game, so to speak, uh almost after almost every every shot when we would play okay what were you thinking there what what were you and and, and you might ask it differently a couple of times but you know what did you do there how did you do that or or what were you thinking or what did you put how did you hit that shot and uh so i think tell me if i'm wrong there but i think as i did that you started taking those things and either trying them yourself or taking them to the range and doing those same things trying to do that same stuff right i mean <clears throat> what's the old adage uh golf is 90 percent physical and 80 percent mental or something like that i don't know it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy but mental the mental part the of golf is huge i think it's opposite i think uh, it's like eight percent athletic and 90 yeah. percent mental which well, brings up another debate about our golfers athletes but um some are there you go there you go i got a new argument on that we may not be athletes, but we're sure smarter than the average athlete. <laughs> we know how to use our, our athletic ability. Whatever whatever athletic ability we have. There's a lot of mental. There's a lot mental. of mental. Like, how am I going to get this shoulder through the ball? Mm-hmm. And there's course but, management, too. That, yeah. That's a big key. Um, I've learned through the years that you don't have to pull out your driver on every hole. If it's, you know, I, I, another thing, watching Kip through the years, like, well, it's a 330 yard hole. Why aren't, why aren't you hitting driver? You, you know, especially when we were in the league, Kip said, "Well, you don't have to. You just all you got to do is got to get it in the middle and you know, have a short iron into the hole." Like, oh, well, but driver is fun. <laughs> <laughs> watch how far I can hit this, and then yeah, watch how far it goes into the woods. Yeah, we got an opportunity here at Magnolia Grove several years ago. I wish I could remember how long ago that was, but we went out. They were about to tear the greens up, and uh. We took a day off work, went out there, and talked to the pro. And uh, he goes, what are y'all doing out here? Like, ah, last shot. He goes, why don't y'all play it backwards? You remember when Paul said, Paul Martinez, he goes, play backwards. Play from the green to the tee. I don't think I was there. I thought you were. Mm-mm. I think you were. You just forgot. Well, I am old. Yes, you are. Uh, good thing it's an old man's sport. But he told us, he said, he said, yeah, he said we're, uh, we decided to play from the red, the, the short uh, tee. Yeah, we did do that. I remember that. And we told him, we said, we thought we were going to shoot under par. Yeah, and he laughed. And he laughed. And then he said, not going to happen. And uh, we said, no, nah, we're going to do it. I think we can do it. And he goes, well, y'all get back. Come in and tell me what shot. And uh, and just like you're talking about, from the ladies' tee, forward tee, you got your driver on those short holes, and your eyes are just big. Like, yeah, I can get mm-hmm. there. And sure enough, hit it right in the woods. Now, I think I came in at at a 74 that day. Yeah, I think you're, I, I think I was still there like an 80 something. And um, and I, I went right up to Paul Martino and I was like, "Look, dude, you're right." And uh, he goes, "What'd you shoot?" I said, "74." And he's he was he was like, "Man, that's that's better than I thought y'all were gonna do." And he called out the holes. He goes, "You you hit driver on six, and you call you hit driver on um, oh shoot, what's that other hole? I'll think of it in a minute." And he was right because in it's six. I hit it right straight, and it's oh, a dog leg right. Probably seven, too. Maybe it was. I thought it was another six, par five. Six was, well, seven, you hit driver. We were, like, down in that little, that hole. Yeah, ugly. <laughs> ugly hole. So bad. So those are the two holes. He called them. That I, I think I double bogeyed those holes because I was thinking driver can get there, and I, 
make an eagle and I made a double. So yeah, that was a fun day though. Uh, so that was one of the times that I have played from the ladies too, but it was fun. Um, but cool. Yeah. So I don't know where we were, but let's jump over to, uh, you remember the day that you got the name Ultraman? Ultraman. That was given by Mr. Bedford himself. Um, you know, in a scramble tournament, you, you, like we talked, you're always trying to hit the, the ball just as far as you can. And I did that a couple of times with like a brand new Pro V1 ball and lost both of them. And then also I looked my bag and I had this ball was a Wilson Ultra. And every time I hit it, it went straight straight down the middle, 250 yards or oh, something. Oh, it's further than that. Uh, you were out driving me. That wasn't as hard. <laughs> And, and then uh, we, we got up on a par five, and Kip goes, I think you can hit right through there. And it's like these pine trees that were close together. Like, all right, I'll try it. And so I, I rear back, and I try to hit it. And it, it I, ne we never saw it, I don't think. But we saw it. We, we drove around, got in the fairway, and it was like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Kip goes, man, that's got to be the ball gotta be the it's, ball it's gotta be, be the ball it's an ultra ball <laughs> you put so the, the, then i think we hit the approach shot or something hit a good approach shot on next the next driving hole is where the tag come from i mean i reached back and nailed it again and then kip goes there's ultraman and i made this pose like uh, you'd have to see it but kind of like a dab almost like uh yeah it was a dab before a dab and uh um, created the dab i created the dab and just didn't know it gosh we just now figured that out that mm -hmm. was you I got the stick man to prove it on a on a visor. A guy named Joey Wells was with us, and he uh, he made some hats. That, That's that right. Point. I sketched out. I sketched out your pose yeah, in a stick and, man format. Yeah, Joey made the hats, and, and Joey's like, "Man, that's funny." And then I so, think I don't know if he'd gone to the bathroom, maybe or something. <laughs> You're old. You have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> anyway, Joey says, "Let me have that or send that to me." And next thing, next thing we know, a couple months later, Joey had some visors. Had made. some visors with Ultraman. Ultraman. It was, and then. <laughs> You still Just got to, the hat? I still, still got, got I still got a visor. And then uh, right, like every picture. tournament I play in, if I if if I hit good shots, it was Ultraman. And then it just it just grew from there. And then we played in I think we played in a pro am with He Young Park or Oh yeah? Remember? You, you dabbed yeah, on you dabbed on No, young. I hit the ball and, and uh it, it got kind of close to the hole and then I asked I asked Siri, I said, Who am I? She says, you're Ultraman. Oh, that's right. That's right. You and pulled your phone out. You pulled your phone out. And, he, and, and Carrie looked at he young part and he goes, hey, watch this. And he pulls his iPhone out and he goes, he pulled up Siri. And he's like, Siri, who am I? You are Ultraman. Yeah. And well, we all cracked up laughing. So it's just been, it's just been my golf nickname for since that, that day in Pensacola. And you got a, uh, you got a Yeti cup. With that yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I've, I've taken on the moniker of Ultraman, so I've, uh, I've gotten a cup that had the logo on it that I really didn't want to dis did it to display, so I had somebody make an Ultraman sticker and covered it up with Ultraman. So. Tui. But Tui. <laughs> Tui. <laughs> that's a, Shout yeah. out to Joey. Yeah. But, Tui um, to Joey. Yeah, so that's where you got your moniker. Is that what you said? Moniker? Mm. Moniker. I like that. So his moniker is Ultraman. But, uh, yeah. So and you can't give yourself a nickname, by the way. No, uh, well, I did. You did. Well, you are Kip, so. <laughs> but, it, you know, anyway, <laughs> Thomas Waggle. Uh, well, cool. Well, Carrie, I appreciate you being here. Uh, before we go, what's your personal best? My personal best is a 71 shot in Hurley, Mississippi. Hurley, our favorite place. Gosh, that course is so much fun, y'all. It's, uh. It's a great public golf course. It's a very a great. Job. It's a very good course for beginners. Yes, yes. Obviously, Flat, easy to walk. Easy. Seventy-one, par seventy-two. It's par so seventy-two, one seventy-one one under. I hear you, man. Um, how many birdies? Two, two birdies. Two birdies, Ooh. one bogey. It was, like you said, it's one of those things. Everything was working well. You're making putts, long putts for par, um, tipping it close. Just. You know, I, I don't think I hit probably nine greens, but when I did, I, I, it, they counted. So they counted, yeah. Like, you know, kick-in birdies are always nice. Yeah, and Carrie's a good putter, guys. Uh, Ultraman. Ultraman. 
when he's when he's tempoing, uh, his driver is phenomenal, and then uh, he's deadly with the putt. And uh, you brought it up. I'll 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 tell this story too. But the junior pro am that we played in, I don't remember that oh, girl's name. Yeah. But uh, we'd been putting fairly well, and uh, we get to a hole. I think it's number seven. Um, and Carrie, we were kind of goofing off, I guess. And uh, Carrie, it was probably what a thirty foot putt. Yeah, at least. And uh, we were all trying to sit there and try to read it. So yeah, we're all we can't figure it out. Don't know which way it's breaking. Carrie gets over the ball and he goes, "Tell you what, I'm gonna lip it out." Well, we were arguing about the break with with another buddy of ours. He was going, oh, I think it's going left. I think it's going. I said, all right, I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to just miss it by this much. That's right. <laughs> and y'all, it hit the, what, the left side. I yeah. think it hit, it caught the left side of the cup and lipped out. And that little girl that we were playing with, she's about 14, I think. And uh, the, her, her jaw just dropped. <laughs> I mean, just dropped. And uh, I was like, well, he told you he was going to do it. And she, I mean, she just stared a hole at Carrie for the Like, why'd the you miss that minutes. putt? Yeah. Why well, don't you just make it? Anyway. So he's a phenomenal putter. Um, all right, what's your favorite golf course that you've ever played? And then what would your bucket list <clears throat> golf course be? Um, favorite course played? Uh, Ross Bridge. All right, that's mine. Um, it's just a phenomenal layout. I mean, especially with a, <clears throat> the first the first hole is a par five. Yeah. And... If you bunt it over the hill, you're going to hit it 300 <laughs> yards. I yeah. mean, it's just crazy. So you're going to get chances all bowed out. And then the green, phenomenal. I mean, the bent I grass the greens. greens. Bent grass and they're big. I um, mean, if if you run a putt 10 foot past it, you feel like, ah, that's no problem. Yeah. I can make, that, like can I can make, make that come back. That's right. And that's one of the first places that we ever played where they painted the inside of the cup. They keep the cup, the inside of the cup painted white. So you, you yeah you that that's the, the seniors the played game. there a few times. I yeah. think they were going back. But. Regions Charity Classic Regions Classic um, something something. They're over at Shoal Creek now. Yeah, love Ross Bridge. Love it. That's my favorite golf course. Um, that's another good course is uh, Farm Links. Yeah, yeah. Farm Links is just set out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Par, is it Parnell or Parcel Farm? Parcel. Parcel Farm. Parcel Farms. Um, just, just pretty. I mean, you had elevation changes. Just everything was gorgeous. Um, like I said, you're out in the middle of no wood, not nowhere. Nobody's bothering you. Nobody. It's a great place. You, that's one of those places you pay like a hundred bucks, I guess. Yeah, play all day and they feed and, you lunch. Yeah, and they think they think you're gonna play thirty six, <laughs> but we play fifty four. Um, one before lunch and two after lunch. Now and I'll tell you the the my normal go to, especially local and mobile, is you know obviously Magnolia Grove, the crossing scores. Yeah. yeah, that's just you're talking about comfort level. You get out there and you just your comfort level is like, oh, I can make this shot, and I know how that goes, and I know where to hit this ball, and you know you think you know there's other courses around you think you know you play a lot, but it's just the the comfort level at at the crossings at Magnolia Grove is just through the roof. Yeah. I enjoy the falls out there too. Just recently, I used to not like it, but I like it now. Yeah, I'm getting there. Yes, yeah. you'll learn one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's the bucket list golf course? Bucket list golf course. I've always said I want to go to Scotland and play one of those courses. Oh, Scotland! Oh, Scotland! I have no idea what. Did, uh, well, will I get it, get there? I Thomas don't know. That's say, what it's called. You a, sound like you're from Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not gonna play in a kilt. Oh, come on, man. You go over if you go over to Scotland, you gotta play a kilt. I get kind of drafty. Well, it might. <laughs> it might. But if, that's I, I would do that. I would do that. If I All played right, I'll tell you what, if I we get if we kilt. go to Scotland, we'll play in kilts. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll video it. All right, so bucket list, Scotland. Mm hmm What if I threw out Augusta National? To play it? Yeah, well, I'll play it. That's more that's, that's Is that a bucket list or you think you're gonna do it and you're not putting it on your bucket list? I can't tell you. Ah, look at that. That's good. No, I mean, yeah, that would be up there too, but I don't know. It's just something about going across seas and yeah. playing. Cold weather in a, in a kilt. Mm -hmm. All right, dude. Hey, I appreciate you being here. Appreciate you coming over tonight. This is the school room. That's where we're doing. So let me ask this real fast. So first time you ever played golf, you remember? Hmm. How old were you? You remember? Uh, first time I ever played around a golf, I was probably 26. Wow. 
Wow, you've done well. Seriously, that's good. I, I first time I played, I was about nine. I think I've shared that story. I played the played at Brooklyn with a nine iron. It was my favorite club. I couldn't hit anything else. Okay, just just so you, I don't know if you watched this movie, um, Seve Ballesteros. I tried. You gotta watch. Asleep. You gotta watch that movie. All right, I'm gonna watch it. I'll put it on. I did. I fell asleep. I tried. He learns how to hit everything with a three iron. Oh, okay. We yeah, gotta try gotta, that. Gotta one watch day. that movie. I've heard. Well, he had to. That's the only club he had. Nice. I think we need to go try that. I've heard people do it with five iron. Go play around with five iron. I think we did it with a seven. We'll try it. Maybe with par three. All right, dude. Hey, man, I appreciate it. All right, no Come problem. back anytime. Thomas? Maybe, maybe Thomas will be Mr. Waggle himself. Mr. Waggle? Maybe he'll have his accessories for his three-wheel golf cart by then. All right, guys. See y'all.